Okay, hey, guess who I got here? Jake Wafonios. And uh, we've had lunch together, celebrating the Bundy victory. Uh, Jake's here uh, following up on the Vegas shooting. And uh, some information you just got about Campos. Yeah, so I had a chance to interview some of the employees at the Mandalay Bay. I stayed at the Mandalay Bay, made some contacts, interviewed people off property. They didn't want to talk on the, you know, didn't want to be filmed naturally because they'll get fired. But I can tell you this now that I'm no longer at the hotel and if, I was afraid that if I put this up on my own channel while I was still at the hotel, they'd kick me out. I'd be out there on the street. But I can tell you that I spoke with Mandalay Bay employees who know the security guards. There are 14 to 20 security guards, or there were 14 to 20 security guards before the October 1st shooting. Since then, they've hired another roughly 10. They've got about 30 there now. But out of those 14 to 20, the employees that I spoke to said they, they know all of them or know of all of them. Um, some they know quite well. The security guards don't know who Jesus Campos is. They have no idea who this guy is that we're being told was a Mandalay Bay security guard who went to the rescue. So I, I know that people have talked about that as a possibility, but I can now confirm it. Having spoken with multiple Mandalay Bay employees, they don't know who Jesus Campos is. And as uh, I was telling you, uh, maintenance doesn't know this Stephen Chef. Yeah, yeah, Steve Shuck, the guy Shuck. who's uh, appeared on the Ellen DeGeneres show with uh, Jesus Campos and really looked like his handler. Looked he like really he was did. the one doing all the talking. Yeah, yeah, Mandalay Bay employees in maintenance. Yeah, which saying sounds like they don't know who he is either. I can also say that I interviewed someone who uh, is in security, as well as someone who was working in the uh, the control room where they have the video cameras, and uh, they were put on leave after the shooting. And they are quite scared because they saw some things. They wouldn't even tell me what they saw. They just said what they saw has put them in fear. One of them has left the job. One is still there, but it's uh, they're they're frightened. And you were saying earlier, there's no way 200 bullet holes or uh, bullets yeah. pass through the doorway. Yeah, I stayed up there so that I could examine the door, see how thick it was, kind of check to see what kind of ballistics uh, impacts what what it would do and went to one of the suites, examined the suite doors, uh, tried to do that quick. I took some pictures and looked at it. If you look at the crime scene photos that were leaked, you can see there's two doors there. If you're looking at, at it on screen, this side has the handle, this side over here. This door has been removed and it's been put on the inside kind of like this. So you only see the top half of the door leaning there. The, the door that's still standing has no bullet holes in it. Uh, that you can see. This one that's down on the ground, there are almost no bullet holes in the top. There's some in the middle. I count 12 to 14 bullet holes. So the story that Sheriff Lombardo has given us is that there were over 200 bullets that were fired through that door at Jesus Campos into the hallway. Unless there's 190 bullet holes all crammed together down at the bottom as if Stephen Paddock was shooting at the kneecaps or the shins of someone outside the door, those bullet holes don't exist. Not only that, but some people, uh, including uh, UFO Hunter UK, uh, some other people who have worked in carpentry, different industries where they install doors, they look at it and they say there's just there's no chance that that these shots came from inside the room out. So you were were you up there on the 32nd floor at I, the doorway? No, no, no. I was on a different floor underneath. Uh, he was in 32, 135. I won't say what floor I was on, but you go to 135 on a on a, a lower floor, and it's the same setup, you know, same kind of design. Hallways are the same, same location for the fire exit. So, what like about that. then the the connecting room? Uh, if you're looking straight into the the, the layout, yeah. you got the big sweep that comes around the end, and then that door, the room next door where the window was out, the second window. Is there a connecting door inside? There, on one side there is one side it goes around to like a fire escape uh, stairwell. On the other side there's a room, and there is a connecting door that can be there. But the question is, when you look at the size of the room, you've got one door that's facing this way, going almost straight north, uh, or one window. And then you've got some windows in the same suite. If he wanted to have two vantage points so that he could fire... He had them all in the same room? Setup, he could have done it in the same room, and it would have been a lot quicker, it would have been a lot more efficient to do it in the same room, and a lot safer. 
So the fact that we've got a separate room where you have to go through, run around, go through doors to get to the other other room where there was supposed to be a gun, it makes no sense. Very likely, what we have is a classic uh, setup where you have an operation going down in one room, uh, gun sales, whatever it may be, with FBI or other operatives in the adjoining room as a sting operation, yeah. doing recording, things like that, ready to go in if something goes bad. And that's very likely what this was. So you think uh, Paddock and uh, what was the maintenance man, you think they might have been uh, part of the operation? I hesitate to say it until I have it, you know, I can confirm it, but I'll say that's where I'm strongly leaning. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's what the end the, the fact that they are lying to us about who these men are, uh, what else, what is the alternative? I mean, they don't work there. So if they don't work there, what they're being presented to us by, they're being graded by the Vegas PD and the, uh, the FBI as heroes. Who else would they be working for? Yeah. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thanks.